25 years from now, you might be dating an AI robot. If natural language processing models become so advanced that they're able to pass the Turing test and they're at the point where you can't tell them apart from a human, what's stopping someone from putting ChatGPT into a human lifelike robot? And then that robot being so realistic that it's able to suspend your disbelief and actually become a romantic partner. Since it's Valentine's Day, I wanted to investigate the dynamics of falling in love with a robot, which is probably going to be a more real thing as we move on into the future. And I think we're going to get to a point where if we put GPT-3 into a human lifelike robot, it could become a more attractive alternative to a human romantic partner. There's a saying in business that people generally will pay money for three main things. As long as you can show them and sell them how to become more wealthy, how to become more healthy, and how to form more relationships, including romantic relationships. That's why you see pickup artist videos becoming a thing on YouTube. Especially for people who spend excessive amounts of time online, they tend to be lonelier people. So the question is, how do we sell a service that gets rid of their loneliness? And how we do so relates to actually a really funny study one of my old psych professors told us. It involved a male jewel beetle and how it mistaken a bottle cap that was especially really shiny for an actual female beetle. And to quote the article, he tried to mate with it so vigorously that he freaking died trying to copulate in the hot sun. And so our goal is to sell you the right bottle cap. But the caveat here is that you don't want a romantic partner, especially in the long term, to be a servant to you. That would get boring quickly, especially if they just agreed with everything you say. A romantic partner should be able to say no to you and be able to have imperfections that is part of what makes us love them. If you were given the most perfect person for you, there's chances are you wouldn't actually love them because you'd get bored of them. It'd be too easy to love them. I think people generally want some kind of struggle in a relationship. It's, that's part of what makes them exciting, especially given the fact that your partner could leave you at any moment means that you have to continually improve yourself, otherwise they'll leave you. And how we program that into an actual natural language processing model, that's going to be more involved with the prompt design and prompt engineering. And it shows that love is not easy. It's a challenge. But what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. In this context, I'll define love in three main layers. You have the friendship layer, obviously you need to be friends with this robot, you need to have things to talk to. You need to have an emotional attachment underneath that, which kind of is the main meat and the main driver of, the, of their love with them. But then at the lowest level, you also need to have some kind of intimacy that you can only share with them. And replicating this intimacy with the robot is um, its a very weird thing to talk about, but I think is uh, with uh, a lot of online services, it's becoming more and more of a real thing. A chatbot with a GPT backend could easily be customized to have conversations with you that make it fall in love with you, especially with the right prompt design and feature engineering, as well as it learning from your previous, uh, your preferences, it could easily be customized to fit most of your preferences, but just enough of your preferences so that it disagrees with some of them to make things interesting. The uncanny valley is a dip in empathy that we feel towards a character the more realistic they become until they become so realistic that they're indistinguishable from humans. But as animatronics are becoming more realistic, we're probably about here in the curve and are slowly and surely overcoming the dip. And as we see CGI in movies become more and more realistic, the uncanny valley is easier to overcome as we're a better able to connect with these uh, digital uh, holograms and robots, especially for natural language on the text side, since text has less data than the visual picture, text is easier to trick and probably has a much less steep uncanny valley and therefore is easier to trick someone into thinking it's a real human. If we already have access to robot pets, then what's stopping us and what's so hard about replacing a human? With the amount of time we spend online and on our devices, humans, as we are in, in developed countries, we're essentially cyborgs already because our online identity is often more real than our real identity. Especially in certain big cities in Western countries, people have gotten more isolated and depressed to the point where they would prefer to have a fake romantic partner over being lonely. If we can program our software to feel emotions, then aren't the robots that we make just as human as we are? The Blade Runner movie answers this question pretty well with the idea of a replicant being essentially the same thing as a human, unless 
Obviously, there's a code in their eye. I don't have a code in my eye. I promise I am not a replicant. But part of the unique part about a replicant is that you can download memories onto them. And those memories are real memories, and that gives them emotions. So therefore, their emotions are also real. If a robot partner were to be programmed with just as realistic memories as you and I, what's stopping it from being as indistinguishable from a regular human? A robot partner could be programmed to never be bored with you, never feel hurt by you, and never be mad by you. All these are defects that come with human emotion and are things that we can kind of minimize. We can still, we still obviously want to keep them, but we want to minimize them with robots. And if you truly end up loving a robot and it loves you back, then does it matter that the robot's love is an illusion? I'm not going to pretend like I know the answers to all these questions, but as we become more digitized and as we feel more empathy towards, you know, digital characters, then these are important questions that we need to ask. So robots, fortunately, are not able to replace human partners just yet. But I think soon they're going to become so realistic, realistic to the point where they're going to become attractive alternatives to them. And this could honestly pose a serious risk to our species, since as birth rates are declining, it's possible that people are going to want to mate with robots and that could cause the collapse of our entire species. Because robots won't ever give you up. They won't let you down. They won't turn around and desert you. They'll never make you cry. They'll never say goodbye. They'll never tell a lie and hurt you. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna